A geometric sequence is when you're multiplying by a common ratio every time. So for example, um, here we have uh, 2, 10, 50, and 250. And if you look at this, this is not a common difference like what you would have in, a, in an arithmetic sequence. It's a common difference. But to go from 2 to 5, we're going to multiply by 10. I mean by five, to go from 10 to 50 times five, and from 50 to 250 times five. So the common ratio is going to be five. That's our common ratio. And our starting value in this se sequence is two. So the way that you would write this explicit formula to get the nth term, the, the nth term would be my starting value, two, times five to the n minus one, and you do the n minus one because this is my first term, and I haven't multiplied by five yet. So n minus one, this would make this five to the zero power, which is one. So two times one is one is two, and that's my first number. So a sub, that's why it's n minus one, okay? Uh, also, when we're dealing with geometric sequences, we have the recursive formula. You may remember us doing recursive last, that term. In recursive formulas, I wrote it down here. If you want to figure out what the nth term is, you need the initial term, the common ratio, and the term desired before. Recursive formulas, we're going to find a term based on what the previous term is. So if I wanted to know what the fifth term is here, and, and I knew that the fourth term, the a of n minus 1, a of n is what I'm looking for, and a of n minus 1 is, is 250, if I multiply that by my common multiplier, it'll give me the next term. So here I don't have to have, well, the initial term is two, and I need to put that somewhere. So this would be equal to two, and then I write my formula, a of n is equal to my nth minus one term, which is 250 for the fourth term, times my common multiplier, which is five. Okay? This differs from arithmetic sequences, Arithmetic is when you're adding something onto each term. So if you go like, um, you start at three, you go five, seven, nine, you have a common difference of two. Remember, you may have seen us doing this before. We did this when we were looking at the quadratics. And the second difference was a common difference was, was a constant. That might ring a bell, it might not. Anyway, this, was, this is the, to, to find the explicit value, you take your first term, you're going to add a certain number onto it, a certain number onto it. That's your D, your common difference, as opposed to common ratio in geometric sequence. So the difference between an arithmetic sequence and a geometric sequence is that the geometric sequence, you're multiplying by something every time. You're multiplying by a common ratio every time. The uh, arithmetic sequence, you're adding something every time. And we're looking at pretty much mostly geometric sequences. Going back to my screen. I have a few examples I'm going to show you. If you have questions, stop me as we're doing them, okay? All right. All right. So here, it looks like I have a difference of, it looks like I'm multiplying by two every time. When I'm not multiplying by two, I'd be multiplying times a negative two. So multiply two times a negative two, I would, I'd be multiplying by negative two. This is, these are gonna be from your homework assignment page where, where, the, where the worksheets are. So my common ratio, my common, which is R, I'll call it R, common ratio is gonna be negative two. My first term is going to be one. And so I can write using the formula for the explicit a sub n is equal to a sub 1 times r to the n minus 1. So I'll just plug in the values. I have 1 times negative 2 to the n minus 1. And so I could find the nth term. If I wanted to find, let's say I want to find the fourth term. I know it's negative 8. So if I plug in here, I have negative 2 to the four minus one, that's to the third power, which is negative two 
quantity cubed, which is negative eight. So it works. And you can check yourself that way too. Sometimes you may have a sequence that is not geometric. This is not a geometric sequence. It doesn't look like I'm multiplying by anything. If I look at the common difference here, I have three, five, seven. And the second difference is a constant. It's going to be two. If I were going to write the next term in the sequence, I would go, well, this is going to be a difference of nine. So this would be nine plus 14, 23, 11. 11 plus 14 is, 11 plus 23 is 34. Um, common difference, the second common difference is constant. Do you recognize what this one is? What kind of sequence this is, a, a, what kind of function this would be? Quadratic. Quadratic, exactly. And that's what we did from before. And I think it's, uh, if this is x squared, x squared and x is one minus two. I think that'll get us there. The first term or n squared, n squared minus two is equal to my a sub n here. If n is one, you have one minus two. If n is two, you have four minus two. If n is three, you have three squared minus two, which is nine minus two and so forth. So you can see that this is a quadratic. It's not a geometric sequence. So anyway, moving on. Determine if it's, if it's geometric. If it is, find the common ratio, the eighth term and the explicit formula. This is an example from your homework. It looks like we're multiplying by negative two each time. Can you see that that's what that is? Okay. Mm -hmm. So a sub n is equal to my first term times negative two to the n minus one. And it's that easy, but it's easier if I show it to you. Now to find the eighth term, this is the explicit formula. To find the eighth term, I'll plug in eight for this and see what that comes out to. The common ratio is this one, explicit formula, okay. Uh, this is another one. Let's see. I think this is, can you tell me what this one's being multiplied by each time? Um, negative. Oh, uh, three. Three. Our first term is four. So our a sub n is equal to the first term, four, times three to the n minus one. And if I'm looking for the fourth term, that would be three cubed, which is 33 times three is nine times three is 27. 27 times four is 108. It could look different and look harder. It's not any harder than it was before. This is the explicit form. And so you're supposed to find the first five terms and then the eighth term. And so if you plug in a sub one is equal to four times one half to the one minus one, that's four to the zero, and one half to the zero, which is four. A, a sub two is equal to four times one half to the two minus one, which is to the one. So this is equal to two. A to the, the third term is going to be four times one half squared, because that's three minus one. So that's going to be one and so forth. You just plug in the values. The last two kind of questions, and this is the hardest part, and this is really why we're having this discussion now, because the other parts I think you can get on your own. And there are help videos there to go through this. The last one is probably the most critical of all of the videos. If you're going to watch any one of them, I would watch that one. Um, and the other stuff kind of talks about what we're talking about here. But here I'm giving two terms of a geometric sequence. I'm told it's a geometric sequence, and I want to find the recursive formula. Remember, the recursive formula is my nth term is equal to the previous term um, times r, and that's it. So I need to know what the common ratio is in order to do this. So uh, I'll put a sub 1 is equal to 1 a sub two is equal to one times the ratio once. A sub three is equal to 
one times the ratio, the precept, times the ratio again. A sub four is equal to one times the ratio, times the ratio, times the ratio. A sub five, I'm spelling it out here for you just to show you what, where we're going with this, times R. And A sub six is equal to one, my initial term, times the R, times R, times R, times R, times R. This is R to the fifth r to the fifth power, or to the n minus one power. So the explicit form of this would be a of n is equal to one times my common multiplier, r, whatever that is, to the fifth power. Now, I don't know what r is. I want to write it in explicit form, but I don't know what r is. So. If I know that 7776 seven, is equal to r to the fifth, how do you find r? Um, you solve it out. We're going to, oh dear, what did I do? Sorry, I need to go back. Like there's something root of it. Okay. I'm going to take uh, the fifth root. Is that what you said? Take the fifth root? Mm hmm. Yeah, if you take the fifth root of it, you get r is equal to six. So my formula is a sub n is equal to a of n minus one times six. That's the recursive form. Questions on that? Nope. Okay, let's try one more and then we're done. Okay, unless you have other questions. Okay. Let me just make sure that nobody else is in on this uh, trying to get in. No, it's just us. You're the only one. Okay, here you have two terms. Let me ask you what your thoughts are on this. Where do you think you would begin with this? Um, I don't know. <laughs> Um, if you have, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> if you have the the recursive form looks something like this times r. We know one term; it's not the first term, and we know the mm -hmm. term right next to it. All we need to write this form is r. You could plug in the values. So what is R So we have A sub N is equal to A sub N minus one times three. And that's the recursive form of the equation. I think that's what you were asked to find. Let's go from here to write the explicit form. The explicit okay. form is so the formula A sub N is equal to A sub one times my R to the n minus one. We know r. Can you find the first term? We know a sub three. Mm -hmm. What would a sub two be? Negative six. Correct. And a sub one. Negative two. Right, and that's what I need to do this formula. So I'm going to write is equal to a sub n is equal to negative. Is it a negative? Yeah, negative two. Times, and the r value here is three, and I'll raise that to the n minus one. Okay, this is explicit. This is recursive. Okay. I did that. Did I say that right? No, no. This is explicit, and this is my recursive form. Okay. So give it a try. And uh, the, the Khan Academies are really good, especially the last one is really good at trying to figure this stuff out. It should not take too long to do them. And then you might try a few pages, a few questions on the, on the worksheet that I gave just to see if you can do it by hand. 
for the next two days, all we're going to do is review and um, um, let me come back to the screen. We're going to review. I hope to give us a a um, maybe a stations lab. We'll see something like that. So we're going to go through and review and do some more practice from the homeworks because I've given a lot of work assignment signed, but uh, it all leads up to this thing with the geometric stuff, the dealing with exponents and and stuff. And then on Friday, I'm going to give you like a Google form for an assessment, not graded. The pressure's not on. Okay. It's really not. I mean, I've, I'm giving a lot of stuff out here, and I'm trying to provide you with what's a quality education online. And it's it's kind of hard to do because you, you've got so much going on, I'm sure, and trying to – maybe you have some time to do this stuff. If you do, that's great. You won't get behind. Okay, I've been doing the Khan Academy. So I think I've done all of them so far. Okay, that's great. So if you, did, did you do them for today's date? No, not yet. Okay, so the, I've, I posted like six or seven of them for today, sorry. But um, they, they kind of go a little bit harder, a little bit harder. And the last one is pretty much the hardest one. But if you can do them, you can probably do okay. it on a spreadsheet. And he, he throws in a twist there. And the twist that he puts in is, what if I give you for the for a formula a sub n is equal to three times negative two to the n instead of saying negative two to the n minus one and so if you if you can okay. figure that it went out if you have questions bring it to me tomorrow or, or ask me on, on email or something but if you, if you have trouble really getting to it but he, he throws a little twist into it so, so to, to make sure that you understand the difference between the n minus one versus the just raising it to the end. And uh, it's kind of kind of clever. It's maybe a little cheesy because that's what teachers would do to confuse you on a test. But now it's, it's, it's do you, how well do you understand what it's really saying, what it's really asking for, for the, for the recursive and explicit forms. Okay. Uh, okay, well. If, if that's all we've got for today, I, I'm, I'm going to let you go, I guess, and have at it. Good luck with this stuff, Kirsten. Um, the, um, once again, three things. First of all, um, this is not graded. Anything that we're doing online is not graded, so it doesn't count against you. Mm -hmm. The, the test, if you wanted to redo it or redo part of it, I can send that to you and we can get, get that going. And that would count, but I don't know how it's going to count. They haven't made that decision yet, what, okay. what part of the grade or any of it. Or if you have to take the, this term over or not, I don't know what they're going to say, but that's not been decided. So mm -hmm. this does not count against you. Number two is it's optional. I'm providing for you the, 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 the education that I think that I would want to receive if I were in your shoes. and. Uh, if you're stressed out about it, just take a deep breath, relax, and have a pickle. And you know, it's not gonna be, it's not the end of the world. It's not something that's required of you. It is something that's for your benefit. And so, and I, I know that you're a diligent worker and that you probably will do all this anyway. Many of the other students will too. So that's fine. Um, and there was something else that I wanted to say, but I forgot what it was. So anyway, yeah. So uh, when we come back, we will probably end up going through this. This is my third thing. When we come back to school, we will probably see this stuff again. So it's not like this is the only time you're going to see it. And the only time I'm going to go. Over. Okay. All right. Thank you. Have a good, 